What's going on growers? James Piccioni coming to you live from Jersey. Summer is here and the harvests are starting to come in heavy, but that means the pests are starting to come too. So today I want to share with you three organic sprays that I'm using in my garden this year to keep it pest and disease free. Let's go. Earlier in the year, I made a video about preventative pest management and some of the practices that we could put to place in the garden to make sure we avoid pests and disease. But what should we do if you have those pests now? That's what I want to share with you today. This video is going to give you some of these organic sprays that have worked for me, so I think it'll be a big help to you. You'll notice a lot of these plants here. They're looking fantastic. They don't have any issues. And we stayed on top of them, made sure they're, they're doing well. But there's some other plants over here, some potatoes that I have a couple problems with. And that's going to bring us to our first spray, neem oil. This organic spray is one of my favorites for a number of reasons. One of them is because neem oil is an overall broad spectrum poison, repellent, and deterrent for a lot of your insects. So it's going to work for a bunch of different things. Another reason is because it's completely natural. It's just made from the oil from a neem tree, which is a tree in India. One of the reasons that this works so incredibly well, neem oil specifically, is because it has a certain chemical compound in it known as azadirectin. This is the chemical compound. This is the stuff that's going to negatively affect your insects. So if you get neem oil that doesn't have the azadirectin in it, it's not worth it. It's not even going to work. So when you go to Lowe's and Home Depot and stuff and you grab the neem oil like this, it's garbage. It's, it's not really, it doesn't have any azadiractin in it. If you look in the bottom left, it's just basically, it says clarified hydrophobic extract of neem oil. So this doesn't have what's gonna actually kill a lot of those insects. You're not gonna get the beneficials that you really, really get from pure neem oil in here. This is just gonna be basically an oil spray, a smothering spray. This is what you want, 100% cold pressed neem oil with azadiractin. I'll put a link to the Amazon in here and uh, this way you guys can order and know which one you're getting. Now, what we're gonna do is just mix this neem oil together. And since it's just pure oil here, we have to make our mixture. So I'm gonna show you how I'm doing my mixture. And you could just follow the directions on the back, it's pretty simple. But I'm just gonna walk you through how we do this. So first we just need, we're gonna go with a gallon jug. We're gonna go one gallon mixture. So we're just gonna start with a gallon of water. I have well water here, so I don't have any chlorine or anything in it, which is, which is good. If you have chlorine in your water, you might wanna put some vitamin C into it to neutralize it, or even you could uh, bubble it for 24 hours. So what we're gonna do first is put in some neem oil. I'm using this gallon jug here with a lid because we're gonna mix it all up after. And also I didn't fill the water up to the top because we're gonna have to add some neem oil and also some dish soap, which I'll tell you why as we progress. So first thing we're gonna do is put this neem oil in and the measurement for one gallon is two tablespoons. So one to two tablespoons. So first thing I'm gonna do is just, I have a half a tablespoon. So I'm gonna put four of these, that'll equal two tablespoons. So we're gonna put that in first. And a few things about neem oil, whenever you're spraying your plants with any kind of sprays, you always wanna make sure you're doing a test spray on some of the, say one plant, before you spray it on all the plants. You don't wanna make a mixture that is gonna negatively affect your plants and spray everything and lose them at once. So make sure you're always testing your sprays first. So there's two tablespoons of neem oil in one gallon of water. So now I'm gonna just shake it up because I wanna show you something. This is oil and water, and as everybody knows, oil and water does not mix. So what happens when we mix the oil and water is all the oil is just gonna go move its way back up to the top, essentially, as you can see, and bubble up there. That's not what we want. We want it all mixing together. Because if we're going around with the sprayer, the sprayer is gonna take it from the bottom, and it's just gonna be water. You're not gonna have the neem oil mixed in. So the instructions say we wanna add some dish soap, just standard dish soap. Ones without fragrances, as plain and natural as you can get it. And this one says two, I believe it's two teaspoons per, per gallon. But we're not really, amount, really worried about that exact amount. What we want to do is make sure we put enough dish soap in that the two, the oil and the water start to mix. So this acts as like a, like a emulsifier or a wetting agent. Now we'll mix this up after we put some soap in. And we'll start to notice that the oil and the water are blending together better. So then we want to wait like 15, 20, 30 seconds to see if the oil is going to bubble up at the top. Once we know that the oil is not bubbling up at the top anymore and the mixture is all, you know, staying together evenly, then we can start putting it into our sprayer and spraying it onto our plants. So we can still see we've got some oil up here. that's sitting and you can see, even see it, especially on this side. So we need a little more soap. And the soap, you can even just use plain soap as a spray against some of your insects. Let's mix up a little more. And your, um, your instructions on your neem oil bottle, that's what's gonna be what you're gonna wanna go by. 
So that's basically what I'm going by, roughly. So that looks like a good amount of oil. We'll let that sit for like 20 or 30 seconds. And then if that's good, we'll go spray that onto the plants. There we go, we got our neem oil all mixed up with our soap. We're gonna pour it into this sprayer. There we go. We'll save this bottle to mix next time. Now we'll just pump this up. And we'll move over and we're gonna be spraying our uh, potatoes right here because we give the Colorado, Colorado potato beetle. One of the reasons I'm spraying this on my potatoes is because I read that it'll help um, prevent the eggs from hatching and the larvae from molting for the Colorado potato beetles. So we wanna make sure we're getting the undersides of the leaves too. This is also gonna help with uh, some of the fungicide issues, the neem oil. So the neem, neem oil isn't going to actually kill the potato beetles, but it will stop the spread, it'll stop them from eating, and it'll kill a lot of their young. So it should really slow down the issues. And we'll just make sure we spray it on the top side and the underside of leaves. One other thing I need to mention that's super important to all of you is you don't want to be doing what I'm doing right here. You don't want to spray neem oil when the sun is out. The best spray time to spray your plants with neem oil, any spray, is going to be in the really early morning or later in the evening. The only reason I'm doing this is just to give you an idea of what I would do because you're not going to be able to see it as well in the morning or the night. So make sure you're spraying your stuff at the right time and always test spray your stuff before you spray it on everything. So I can see a lot of these issues here and the Colorado potato beetle, you'll notice it a lot of times they'll see, you'll see little orange um, eggs and stuff or yellowish eggs on the bottom sides of the leaves. So we wanna make sure we're spraying and get rid of that. So this issue is, you can see it's moved along a little bit already. We've got some beetles right here. That's one that I came by yesterday and crushed it. You can see it's died. So we wanna make sure we're preventing any more spreading of that. This year is the first year I'm trying neem oil on the Colorado potato beetle, but I read on the UMass website that it has good efficacy against it. So we're gonna try it out. If this doesn't work really well and I'm not super happy with the results, there's another thing I'm gonna try. It's called BTSD. It's basically a bacteria, a beneficial bacteria that we'll use to kill some of those Colorado potato beetles. But I wanna wash my hands real quick because Tuck looks like he needs a snack and a little water. So I just wanna make sure I got all the neem oil off my hands and stuff. Another nice reason it's good having this detergent, this dish soap here. So I'm just gonna wash that off. I bet he's probably thirsty too. Tell you want a drink, boy? Thirsty boy? Let me get all the soap off first, boy. There you go, boy. There you go, boy. So it's getting hot out here. Like I said, it's the first day of summer, so. Tuck's like doing what he can to stay out here. He's digging his holes. We, we keep getting him water, but it's, it's heating up even the, the things of water. So we're trying to make sure he's drinking enough and we're gonna grab him a quick little snack that we'll both grab. Want a little carrot boy? So maybe we can see if we got a nice carrot over here. This raised bed is doing so good. I mean, these carrots are the biggest carrots I've, and the best carrots I think I ever grew. Look at that baby, look at that thing. That's what you love to see. Tuck's gonna enjoy this one, I know I am too. So we're gonna grab this and just wash it off. It's a big one. There you go, boy. We'll let him go and I'll have this one. Another thing I wanted to mention is when you're out spraying your stuff, you have to make sure, especially when you're using something like this, the oils, you wanna make sure you're continually shaking your sprayer as you're, as you're moving. Cause you wanna be, make sure you're agitating everything in here to make sure you got a good, clean, even mixture still while you're doing this. So again, shake that sprayer while you're out here. Also, when you're spraying things like neem oil, your plants at different times of the year can take different amounts. So for instance, in the spring, when the leaves are thick and strong, they can take a higher dosage of neem oil than when the plants are weaker in the hot, hot summer in the middle when the, the leaves are just a little softer so, and they're wilting. So you wanna make sure you're, you're doing the right sprays at the right times. This neem oil, you can come out and do it on a seven to 10 day uh, ratio. So these Colorado potato beetles, they're not gonna be killed by just one spraying. They're gonna come back uh, a number of times. So you wanna make sure you're out here every seven to 10 days if needed to make sure you're continually spraying these. 
Another reason that I love using neem oil is because it's not gonna harm my beneficial insects. Most of the insects it's gonna affect is a lot of the ones that are eating the leaves and eating the plant. So something like your cabbage loopers, it'll even work on that. But this year for my brassicas, I decided to try something different, a spray I've never used before, and it's worked incredibly. I'm gonna bring you to it now. This year my brassicas look better than they ever have for a number of reasons. And one of them I think is because of one of the sprays I'm using. This spray, it's non-toxic to mammals. It doesn't harm any of your beneficials. And it goes after a specific pest and specific insects. Another thing is you can use it up to the date harvest. And it's really just a bacteria. It's called BT, Bacillus therogenesis. This BT spray, this bacteria, it's extremely effective against these cabbage loopers and a number of other caterpillars. Like I said, it's very specific. A few weeks ago, my cabbages, they had a lot of the worms on them. And I did what I could to prevent it, but once it got to a point that I really couldn't keep up, what I did was I came out and I sprayed these on the plants. One reason I love this is, is the way it attacks the plants or, or the pests, it doesn't really attack them. So what happens is it gets on the leaves and essentially in the leaves, and then the cabbages eat the leaves, and then it, I meant the cabbage loopers, they eat the leaves and it negatively affects their digestive system and basically causes them to die. So this is something that you're gonna have to do more than once. So basically I sprayed all these, I got rid of all the cabbage loopers, but then you know seven to 10 days later maybe you're gonna see all the other cabbage white flies coming and laying more eggs so this may be something that you have to do a few times I've only used it once so far and I think it's had a great effect but I may use it in a few more days if I start to see some more issues I'm not gonna use it today though because it's supposed to rain you want to make sure you're using these sprays early in the morning or at night not before it rain too this bacteria this product this should work for your tomato hornworms too so just read the back the instructions and that'll guide you the way I see this being used it's it's like using nature to fight nature almost common how we brought in some of those ladybugs or we brought in the praying mantis. So we're just trying to use any kind of like biological forms and stuff and still try to make it as naturally as we can while still getting good harvests. Now, let's move to the third spray that I'm using in the garden this year to keep it pest and disease free. And this one ties into a video that I made a couple months ago. We're gonna be making worm compost tea. The first thing we're going to need to make worm compost tea is worm castings or worm compost. You don't have to use worm compost. You can use regular compost. Again, this is just tying back to a video where we made these compost bins, not because we were gonna to try to use all this worm compost in the garden and fill the whole garden with it, but we wanted to make this worm compost tea and get the most out of it. So when we make worm compost tea, this is just gonna proliferate all the bacteria and stuff in here and just make it even better. So the first thing we wanna do is fill up a five gallon bucket with water. And we wanna make sure we've got a pretty clean bucket because we want the sprayer pretty clean too. So we're gonna fill this bucket up with water and we wanna make sure that if we have city water and there's a lot of chlorine and cl or chloramine in it, we make sure that we fill this up at least 24 hours before and allow a bubbler in there to aerate all the water to make sure to get a lot of oxygen into it to remove a lot of the chlorine. Or we can use some vitamin C and add that vitamin C powder and that'll kinda of neutralize the chlorine in there. So we wanna make sure it's clean and chlorine free. Fortunately, I'm in a well, so we don't have to really worry about the chlorine. So let's get this bucket filled. There we go, five gallon bucket all filled. And make sure again, if you have city water or a lot of chlorine that you're neutralizing that chlorine. Next, we're just gonna make a, a tea bag essentially to hold the compost in. This is an old shirt. It doesn't look old, but it actually is old and stained. So I'm gonna cut this up and make a nice tea bag. When you're making a tea bag, you just wanna make sure it's something that is relatively porous but the stuff's not going to go through because we want to make sure it's filtered so that we're not clogging up our sprayer we're just going to lay this out like this next we're going to fill it up with our worm castings so for a five gallon bucket anywhere from two to four i would say cups of worm castings you don't want to go crazy and use more than you have to so we're just going to scoop out one cup here and it's okay if i get a few worms in there Two, try not to get a lot of worms. Three, and then we'll just do four. Should be good. And I never keep my worms outside like this. They're always inside in the garage where it's cool and dark. I'm just out here doing this for demonstration purposes. Same thing with your compost tea. You don't wanna make it in the sun. Next, we're just gonna make this into a tea bag like you would any bag. And there are plenty of uh, compost tea bags you can buy online and stuff, but we're just gonna make this makeshift one because I think this is something anybody can really make on their own. Now we need to tie it off. I'm just gonna use a zip tie. I found that to be easiest. As you can see, this is porous. We're gonna allow the water to move through this, but it's not gonna let all the debris fall in. Next, I'm gonna zip tie it, but I'm gonna have a little trick I put in. First, I'm gonna put a zip tie this way. Then I'm gonna take a zip tie 
and tie it this way. So I'm going to take this zip tie and close it off so the stuff doesn't spill out in the process locking in this other zip tie too. And I did that so that I could close this off and then tie a string to it to hold it. Now let's move this into our bucket, just like you would any regular tea bag. Drop it in, let it start steeping. You could already see some of the some of the stuff coming off of it. I even will go through and just you know shake a little of the, of the castings out. You'll see the brown coming. And then I could just take a string or another zip tie, wrap it like this on the end. And just let it kind of steep in there like that. So you could do this, but this is just a basic, basic version. What you really want to do, let me move you over to the one that I've been steeping for 24 hours. So you want to steep these things for 24 hours. Here's one I started yesterday. And you'll notice, look at the aeration in there. So I've got an air stone at the bottom. This is providing the aeration with just a little simple aquarium pump. And when we provide this aeration, it's going to provide oxygen, which is going to make all the bacteria in here multiply because we also put in one more thing that I'm going to show you real quick, and that is organic cane sugar or molasses. When we put this sugar or this molasses in, this is like food for the bacteria. Now I'm providing oxygen and food. So the bacteria is going to proliferate, proliferate. There's going to be so many more bacteria than when we started. So let me get a little sugar and show you. So like I mentioned, we want to feed some of these bacteria. So I'm going to use organic cane sugar. Organic cane sugar or molasses will work. Molasses will work better, but I already have this. So two tablespoons per, per uh, five gallons, basically. And this is that mixture I'm making today. And I'll be able to use this tomorrow. So after we do that, we'll put the bubbler in, as I'll show you. Right here, we'll bring this bucket over all ready. We'll put this inside, though, in the shade. We'll make sure we're getting a nice steeping. And then we'll move this bubbler into here. That'll be tomorrow, and this is today. So let's get this into the sprayer and actually start spraying it onto our plants. All this biological bacteria, such good stuff. So here's yesterday's worm castings, uh, compost tea. We're gonna pour it into here and then spray it on a bunch of our plants. There's not a lot of bag, big sticks or anything in here because we filtered all of it. We don't want it blocking up our sprayer. And you'll notice we still have this here. We'll just recompost this because there's still a lot of good stuff in here. There's probably some worms if they survived still in here. Now we'll just spray this onto our plants in the garden. So we've got that uh, compost tea all made. We're going to spray it. And some of the great things about the compost tea, it's got so many beneficial microbes in it. And also it creates almost like this, this like microbial film around the outside of like the leaves and stuff. That just is like a preventative for a lot of things. And it's also soluble nutrients for a lot of the plants. I'm not gonna spray a lot of this stuff now because just like I mentioned before, now is not the time. Plus I see a lot of bees and little insects moving around here. I don't wanna, you know, deter them, negatively affect them or anything, even though this compost tea will probably help them. Before I let you go, I just wanted to mention two little bonus tips, uh, stuff that I use sometimes in the garden. One of them, and you can use too, I'm sure you have it around, is just that simple household soap. You can spray that on a lot of your insects. That'll like dry out a lot of them and basically suffocate them in a sense because they breathe through their skin, a number of them. And another thing you could do that's super easy is just diatomaceous earth. You can put that around the base of a lot of your plants and it's so sharp and jagged, it'll cut into a lot of those insects. So there's a lot of different remedies we could do. You just have to find out what's you know best for your particular location and your particular plant. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope some of the information and the things that I shared in this video bring you true value and you're able to go out there and apply them and they increase your harvests. I really think that they will. That's why, that's why I made this video. And when you're out there through the years, through the months, through the days, make sure you're always journaling what you're doing, especially when it comes to pest management. Because two years from now, three years from now, it would be nice to know that June 20th, always that I've always had the Colorado potato beetles come or something of that, you know, essence, the same idea. If you enjoyed the video though, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And whenever you're shopping on Amazon, do not forget to use our Amazon affiliate link. All the products that I'm using in this video, I'm going to put the links down at the bottom. Again, use those links. Doesn't cost you anything. Gives me and Tuck just a little piece. We'll be back at you with another one real soon. Tuck and James, we 